Turning now to your community focus, Russia's war with Ukraine has now surpassed 300 days. Joining us live to catch us up to speed on the conflict is Jim Lutis, the executive director of the Pell Center at Salve Regina. Jim, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Now, explosions continue to rock towns and cities all across Ukraine. Where does this conflict stand today? Well, it's uh, the, the war, the fact that it's still going on 10 months after Russia invaded, I think has been a surprise to a lot of observers. I think when I was first on talking about this 10 plus months ago, uh, we expected sort of a quick war, uh, given the size of the Russian military, the size of the Russian economy, uh, that we just thought that Ukraine would uh, be a quick work for the Russian military. And I was wrong, others were wrong. Uh, we are at a point where Ukraine has taken back much of Russia's gains, uh, and there's fierce fighting taking place in the, on the ground in the eastern part of Ukraine. But there are air raids on a regular basis targeting Ukraine's uh, critical infrastructure, particularly power supply supplies and water supplies. And so the people of Ukraine are looking at a very cold winter uh, with some of the basic necessities of life, whether it's heat or water, at risk because Russia's targeting those, those, those uh, supplies. Now, as we reported last week here on 12 News, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky appeared in the U.S. speaking to President Biden and lawmakers. What made that visit so unique? Well, I think it's interesting that the that President Zelensky is one of a very few presidents in the history of foreign dignitaries speaking to the American Congress, who did so as as part of a country who was at war with a neighbor. Typically, you see, you know, Canada, the president of uh, Mexico, the prime minister of England, the president of France, America's closest allies, closest trading partners, are typically the kinds of people who address Congress. The fact that President Zelensky did was interesting because it's a moment where I think Speaker Pelosi on her way out the door was trying to give the Ukrainian president an opportunity to make his case to Congress and to the American people and to the new Republican leadership in Congress that continuing to support Ukrainian sovereignty is in America's best interest. He wasn't going to get that invitation from Speaker McCarthy. He got it from Speaker Pelosi. Now, as we mentioned at the beginning of this interview, the war has been going on for more than 300 days. How has public perception of this conflict changed since it began and, and where it stands now? Yeah, it's, yeah, on one level, it's interesting that the, the public support for current policies, America's support for Ukraine has remained pretty constant. We have seen some softening, particularly though, uh, according to a Chicago Council on World Affairs survey done just la earlier this month, among Republicans, 80% uh, of Republicans supported uh, direct military assistance to Ukraine when the war broke out. The number is da now down to around 55% where Democratic support for continuing uh, uh, the, those policies continues to be pretty robust. So unfortunately, we're seeing the split along partisan lines. We'll probably see some more of it in the coming weeks and months. But I think that what we pr know pretty much in our heart of hearts is that Ukrainian sovereignty is in America's best interests. We do not want Russia to win this war, whether you're a Republican, whether you're a Democrat, whether you support Joe Biden or you don't. Uh, Ukrainian sovereignty is important to the world system, uh, to American democracy, and to democracies around the world. And so I think that we'll continue to see American support for Ukrainians' cause, uh, but not without some partisan politics along the way. All right. Salve Regina's Jim Lutis, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.